The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 26. After the demise of the globe valve that I was going to use as the turret steam isolator, I think I now have a better alternative to the globe valve. In this video I show the new valve fitted to the turret and how I made a removable handle for it. I didn't show the fitting of this valve to the turret because it was identical in every way to the previous globe valve that I fitted to the turret, but this is a lot stronger. This is a large injector water valve really that I've adapted for this application. This is better than a globe valve because it's just a 90 degree on or off valve. The silver soldering is a bit more substantial than on the globe valve and it seems to fit quite well. Here I'm removing the gland nut to have a look what's inside. As always I'm using one of my Barco adjustable spanners and you will notice that it's not marking the actual nut that I'm removing. This valve is very well made and the engineering tolerances are quite close. I'd like to show you what's inside it. Nothing special, just this. It's a taper plug type of tap and it should seal quite well against pressure. As this valve is rarely going to be operated, it would only ever be used to blank off the turret and having an isolator fitted like this means that if you need to test the boiler again using hydraulic pressure, you just turn this tap off. You don't need to remove the pressure gauge on the engine. Currently this valve doesn't have a handle and I really didn't fancy using a pair of pliers every time I needed to tighten or slacken it. Instead I fitted a removable handle to it and this is how I did the job. Why is there a drill bit through the existing hole as it's fitted into the machine vise on my drilling machine? I need the position of the handle when it's fitted to the valve to correspond with the hole in the valve. When the valve is open the handle needs to be upright. And that's why I'm using the shank of a drill bit in the existing hole in the valve. This will make sure that the hole that I drill in the shaft for the handle will be perfectly aligned with the hole in the valve. I have a rotary table, I could have used that, I could have done a lot of things, but this was the quickest method. And now it's top tip time. This is a very unorthodox top tip and you have to be very careful with it. I fitted a 3 16ths of an inch diameter end mill into the chuck. What I'm doing is making a mark on the shaft of the valve. This is a very delicate and sensitive job. I don't want to do anything else other than make a mark on the shaft of the valve like this. Which will confirm that where I'm going to drill the hole is in the centre of the handle. But do bear in mind if you put any pressure on the work using an end mill in a drilling machine it's likely to wander all over the place. Using a small end mill first just gives me a better chance of drilling the hole in the centre of the shaft. I know that the drill shank is vertical and as I start the drilling operation I keep my eye on it to make sure that it doesn't move. In fact I've got my thumb on it at the moment. I didn't rest the part on anything and really I should have done. Instead I'm just drilling the hole gently so the part doesn't move in the machine vise. And also I didn't go through with the finished size drill. This for instance is about halfway through the job and it's a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill. At this stage I removed the part to have a look at the other side and I'm pleased to announce that the hole was in the center. I carefully refitted the shaft in the drilling machine and went all the way through with a drill that is one imperial size less than quarter of an inch. And I finished off the job by hand using a quarter of an inch diameter reamer. Now not only is the hole in the middle of the shaft, its diameter is exactly quarter of an inch. Here I've transferred it into the chuck of the Myford lathe and drilled a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole in the end of it which I'm now threading 4BA. I didn't do this under power, the only power was my hand rotating the chuck. First in one direction to thread the hole and then in the other direction to withdraw the tap. Now I just need a handle to fit in this hole which can be clamped in place by the 4BA bolt I'm going to put in the end. After a quick rummage through my box of 4BA bolts, I found a suitable one. The bolt fits in the hole, but it's not as tight as I would like it to be. Anyway, the next part of the job is to make the handle. I've cut a piece of quarter inch brass, put it in the lathe and rounded the ends. 
I didn't measure this before I cut it and rounded the ends, but it ended up being 60 millimetres. And in the centre, I made a mark at 30 millimetres. The reason for this is to allow me to drill a hole in this position. Some viewers may be thinking, well, why am I going to all this trouble of drilling a hole in the centre? Why don't I just put the handle in with some Loctite 603 or even silver solder it in? Well, the answer is quite simple. On the shaft is an O-ring, and it would be quite difficult to remove the O-ring if the handle was a permanent fixture. This clip shows the O-ring in position, and I have of course fitted the gland nut before fitting the handle. Here's a side view of the part with the handle in position. All I need to do now is screw the gland nut into the valve itself. Nothing could be more simple, other than a few girlfriends I've had in the past. When the handle is in the vertical position, that allows steam to the turret. When it's in the horizontal position, the steam is shut off. And even though the handle looks quite good with the brass hexagon bolt holding it in position, I'm not happy with it. From my experience of the tightness of the bolts that were recently attaching things to the boiler, I don't think this brass bolt is going to survive being over tightened to that degree. And for that reason, I'm removing it. I have a better idea. I'm going to rethread the hole and use a stainless steel slot headed machine screw. I found one in my box of stainless steel bits and pieces, and here I'm just testing it with a magnet to make sure it is stainless steel. And in this clip, I'm threading the hole in the end of the valve shaft using an M4 tap. I shortened the M4 bolt by cutting it in half with my bandsaw, then I shaped the threaded end of it to fit into the hole in the handle and here I'm fitting it all together. It's fairly important that this handle doesn't fall out in service, but if it did, you could probably use a Tommy bar or even an Allen key. The problem is, you may want to turn off this valve because something's gone wrong with the turret, so the operation needs to be fairly quick. The shaft of the valve is quite a tight fit in the gland nut, and when I rotate it anti-clockwise, the gland nut starts to wind out. A bit of thread sealant on the threads of the gland nut should take care of this. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.